Campia County Contractor Competency Board is in session for the meeting of June 2nd, 2021. Madam Secretary, would you read the board rules? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Please silence all cell phones. If you wish to speak, please let the board secretary know in advance. Otherwise, raise your hand for the board chair to recognize your request. When the chairman calls you to speak, come to the podium, adjust the microphone, then state your name and address for the record. You are requested to keep your remarks brief and factual. Both parties of an issue will be granted uniform maximum time to speak, and that typically runs between three to five minutes. This hearing is considered quasi-judicial, conduct is formal, and profane or derogatory comments will not be tolerated. Thank you. Do we have a quorum? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, with seven members present, we do. Do you have proof of publication of notification of this meeting? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, it was published in the Pensacola News Journal on Saturday, May 29th, 2021. Thank you very much. At this time, entertain a motion to approve the minutes from May 5th. Motion to approve. Second. Motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion, changes, additions, deletions? <coughs> Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Being none, the minutes are approved. At this point in the agenda, it's time for the public forum. It's an opportunity for the public to come before the board on any subject that's not on the agenda. Is there anyone that would like to come before? No one addressed me for public forum. So. Thank you. We'll move now into the board secretary's status report. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Item one has to do with Michael Parsons doing business as Southeast Roofing and Construction Incorporated, state certified license number CCC 1328407, contractor competency board case number 210434COM. It's in regards to Raymond Malloy at 5235 Pell Moon Drive in Pensacola 32507. As you know, we. Um, brought a an investigator on board at the, she was here at the last he, hearing melissa reber and so now you're going to start seeing these cases coming up um, this is the first case and um during the project the contractor ended up punching a hole um through the ceiling which caused caused some damage for the homeowner the quotes were provided for repair to the homeowner the homeowner selected the repair that they quote that they wanted to go with uh, the repair was performed, but the respondent um, is now unwilling to pay for the repair. Um, that wasn't part of the contract that we have for um, the original scope of work and for what was permitted. So it's at the discretion of the board. In other words, it does not violate any, any rule, code, ordinance. Not that I'm aware of, uh, Mr. Chairman, but at this point, it's, it's up to the board whether uh, the board would like to proceed to a probable cause hearing. Uh, this, uh, if I'm not mistaken, state certified? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. It's up to us, guys. Motion to dismiss. dismiss. Motion made to dismiss. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion to dismiss the Michael Parsons uh, complaint is approved. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Item two is Mark SR doing business as Pinnacle Contractors LLC, state certified license number CRC 1327743. Contractor Competency Board case number 210428COM. It's in regards to Kayla Barrington at 1513 Aura Drive in Pensacola, Florida, 32506. The allegations that were posed in the complaint were unable to be substantiated or verified by staff. Entertain a motion to dismiss. Motion to dismiss. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Being none, being none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion to dismiss Mark S. Ard complaint is approved. Item three is Cyrus Shams doing business as Seashell Construction Group, LLC. State certified license number CGC 152. 
4513 Contractor Competency Board Case Number 210540COM. It's in regards to Catherine Moody at 6761 Bellevue Pine Road, Pensacola, Florida 32526. In this instance, a permit was pulled for a re-roof. The permit is still active. Um, Mr. Sham states that he will schedule the inspection once work is performed is paid for. Mm, the complainant is wanting an inspection, so it's. That's another one that seems to be out of our hands right now. But as the permit is active. It, as long as the permit's active. <clears throat> Entertain a motion to dismiss. Motion to dismiss. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Big none. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Big none. The motion to dismiss the complaint, Cyrus Shams, is dismissed. Oh, contractor's application? I apologize. The first item on the board is uh, Mr. Deron Broughton. Mr. Deron Broughton has an application for reinstatement that was um, continued on for this month. I spoke with Mr. Broughton and he was not able to be here this month because he started a new job and asked if his application for journeyman's can be continued to next month. Entertain a motion to continue to the next board meeting. Motion approved. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion to extend his application for reinstatement consideration until the next board meeting is approved. Thank you, sir. Um, contract 7-2, item 7-2, Devon Milton. Donovan. Donna, Donovan Milton, come on over. Come to the podium, please. Please state your first and last name and address for the record. Edwards Road, Southport, Florida, 32409. Thank you. Ms. Milton put an application for examination for building contractor, and at this time it's staff's recommendation that this application be approved. Entertain a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Being none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, the application for examination for Donovan Melton is approved. Thank you very much for being here. Thank and you. don't come back to see us. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. At this time, would anybody um, here to provide testimony for items 8-1 or 8-2? Please stand up and be sworn in by Ms. Kim, the court reporter. All right, item 8-1 is Tyler B. Thompson doing business as Thompson Residential Construction, LLC. State registered license number RR2828121242. Contractor Competency Board case number 210426COM. It's in regards to Amanda Stevens at 5412 Tom Tomlinson Road in Pensacola, Florida, 32526. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Melissa Reber to give her investigator's report. I believe there are parties present um, as well. On March 28, 2021, a formal complaint was received by the licensing division from Amanda Stevens, property owner at 5412 Tomlinson Road, Pensacola. Ms. Stevens provided a scope of work for residential remodel from Tyler Thompson doing business as Thompson Residential Construction, LLC. Ms. Stevens presented proof of payment totaling $56,338.67 paid to date to Tyler Thompson Residential Construction. Ms. Stevens' chief complaint is inadequacies in work performed, which has been determined to have been without applicable permits. Ms. Stevens submitted text communication between herself and Tyler Thompson regarding punch list items, the inadequacies in the work, and the suggestion by Mr. Thompson that Ms. Stevens should hire subcontractors to complete the project. 
Ms. Stevens has presented photo evidence which she claims are punch list items that were never completed. On April 22, 2021, Investigator Reber reviewed the file and discovered that Tyler Thompson, Thompson Residential Construction, had not provided to Escambia County Department of Licensing proof of his license registered with the state. Investigator Reber spoke with Adam Stevens, excuse me, Amanda Stevens, to determine if she had any other information to add to her complaint and see if there had been any type of resolution to resolve it. Ms. Stevens advised that there had not and that Mr. Thompson had suggested she hire other contractors, which she did. Applicable permits were obtained to complete the punch list items and allege inadequacies in workmanship. Ms. Stevens obtained an owner builder permit to add 169 square foot addition to the back of her home. On April 22nd, Investigator Reber reached out to Tyler Thompson informing him that a final, formal complaint had been filed with our office. I asked Mr. Thompson about the scope of work Ms. Stevens presented to our office and asked about pulling applicable permits. Mr. Thompson advised that he was unaware he needed to pull a permit for the work performed. I did advise Mr. Thompson that moving any walls, regardless of load bearing or not, a permit was required. Mr. Thompson was further questioned about the plumbing and electrical work and he responded that subcontractors were used. Mr. Thompson was advised that Escambia County had no record of any permitted work. Ms. Thompson was asked to provide this investigator with the name in the, of the subcontractors used on the projects. Mr. Thompson stated that he felt the punch list items were excessive and that Ms. Stevens had no intentions of paying him the balance of the contract. Mr. Thompson did suggest Ms. Stevens bring in subcontractors to complete the punch list and deduct that from his final payment. April 28th, I was contacted via telephone and followed up emails by attorney Joe Passaretti, who advised that he had been retained by Tyler Thompson and advised that he asked his client to provide the requested information concerning permits and subcontractors. On May 11th, 2021, this investigator made a site visit to 5412 Tomlinson Road and met with Ms. Stevens to see punch list items she alleged were never done. Also on site was Josh Franklin doing business as Southern Air and Paint. He was observed doing drywall touch-up and painting. Tyler Thompson came to the Building Services Department and updated his license with his state registration number RR2828-12142. On May 12, 2021, this investigator received via email correspondence from attorney Joe Passaretti containing documentation that was requested of Mr. Thompson during our initial conversation, which included electrical and plumbing subcontractors. Mr. Thompson presumably used. The investigator could find no active permits. Could I ask you to read his license, state's license again, the number? RR2828121142. Okay, thank you. Is Ms. Stevens here? She was unable to be here today. Is, uh, is his license active now? Yes, it is. As of when? May, excuse me. On May 11th, 2021, he came into our office to provide us with the state certified license where he'd registered with the state. After the fact. So what happens when a um, applicant comes to the competency board? They get a temporary license number. I believe Mr. Thompson just recently passed his examination. It hadn't been that long ago. Mm -hmm. And so he received that temporary license number at that time. And um, in the statutes and in the county ordinance, it says you have 30 days to get that license registered with the state. Now, we do know that COVID has postponed some things. Um, 
so there has been a little bit of leniency of getting that registration back to us um, and he did provide that to us in May uh, his registration and his original license was uh, November 30th no excuse me November 30th of 2020 which license his uh, temporary license the AAP okay it's sort of hard I believe mr. Thompson is here along with representation okay yes I'd, I'd like to hear that if we can okay. this timeline with the state because I do realize that that does take a while yes I uh, got my license uh, I believe like you said uh, in November um, and then I, uh, I was unaware that I, ha I had a 30-day uh, window. I, I was unaware of that, but I uh, did move forward. I, I believe it was in February whenever I, I uh, got licensed with the state and turned in that information. Um, I think uh, what, what it required of me was to go and uh, set up an, uh, an online account with Tallahassee. I think that's what I had to do and then take a copy of that and bring it to the county. And so I, I think I took the copy of it and brought it to the county in May. Was it within a few days of being told by the county you needed to do that? Uh, yes. As soon as I knew about it, I, I moved forward and did it. Well, I would love to have Ms. Stevens here. I mean, if the board chooses, you can always continue this to the I next know, hearing to know, ensure that Ms. Stevens is present. Uh, I think we need to have Ms. Stevens here. Motion to continue. Motion made to continue. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and second. Any discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion to continue this uh, complaint with Tyler B. Thompson is approved to the next meeting of the board. All right, Mr. Chairman, our next item has to do with um, Brian P. Webb doing business as American Garage Door LLC, state registered license number DWS 0058, contractor competency board case number 200433COM. It's in, uh, in regard to Harbor Point Condominium at 154 Ethel Wingate Drive, Pensacola, Florida, 32507. Um, at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Investigator Reber, as well as I believe both parties are present for this particular case. On April 21st, 2021, Escambia County Building Services received a complaint from George Crumby, an owner at Harbor Point Condominium, regarding the installation of 21 garage doors by American Garage Door. Mr. Crumby has a concern that his garage door and others may not be installed to code and no permits were pulled by American Garage Door. This investigator spoke with Brian Webb at American Garage Door and advised him of the complaint filed and that a permit was applied for but never paid and issued, although the work had already been done. April 28, 2021, permit number 21041851BD was issued. This investigator inquired with Mr. Webb again about scheduling a final inspection, which he indicated he would get done on the following week. May 11th spoke with Mr. Crumby and received a follow-up email and photos referencing a lock installed on another owner's garage. Mr. Crumby remains upset about the install and lack of inspection. May 18th, 2021, this investigator made another call to Brian Webb, referenced the status of the inspection for the garage door work. I again spoke with him regarding the details of the complaint and specifically the hardware used to install the garage doors. Mr. Webb stated that Perdido San Realty negotiated the contract for the installation and there were items not included in the contract, specifically new motors. Mr. Webb advised he was unaware of the original hardware being used on the doors and he would investigate that. 
Mr. Webb further advised he would get the inspection scheduled as soon as he could arrange for someone to meet on site. May 19th, 2021, this investigator hand delivered a copy of the notice of probable cause hearing to American Garage Door, which was signed by Jacob Webb. May 20th, 2011, this investigator conducted, contacted Perdido San Realty and obtained a copy of the estimate and payments. May 24th, 2021, received a text from Brian Webb advised that he was meeting with Mr. Crumby. May 28th, Brian Webb advised that he had completed the repairs to Mr. Crumby's garage unit and would be repairing two more the following day. June 1st, 2021, Mr. Webb advised that he completed five units and would be working the rest of them this week. Is the complainant here? Mr. Crumby, if you could come to the podium and state your name and address for the record. Good morning, George Crumby. Address, please, sir. It's 154 Ethel Wingate Drive, number 201, Pensacola, Florida, 32507. Do you have a statement to make? Yes, sir. In, uh, in September, after Hurricane Sally, uh, I owned a garage that was flooded out, as well as 20 other garages at Harbor Point Condominiums. We are directly on the water. Four or five of those garages were literally torn from the tracks. At some time after that, um, American Garage Door was contacted by our uh, homeowners association, and uh, a contract was drawn between uh, Mr. Webb and uh, Harbor Point Condominium Association. I was there uh, when the doors started to be installed. Uh, there was a crew there. I think there was three gentlemen installing the garage doors. Mr. Webb was nowhere to be seen. I noticed right off the bat that it appeared that some of the installers didn't really understand what they were doing. I'm uh, I former submarine sailor, diesel, nuclear submarines. I have a background in maintenance. I was the director of manufacturing for Revlon Corporation. So I understand machinery. So when, when the garage doors were done, the first thing I noticed is that some of the tracks, those rails that go up from the bottom to the top and go to the back, were different than others. Well, that, that seemed odd to me. So I asked those guys that were putting it up there, what's, what's going on? Well, you know, we're just, these are good, they're fine. Well, I don't, I'm not a garage door guy. I don't, I don't pretend to be. So after a couple of days, it was apparent that something was wrong. Two of the doors had literally fallen down, Mr. White's and Mr. Draco's. So they attempted to have them repaired by American garage door personnel, but it was clear that something was wrong and they hired outside contractors. So at least two people there, Mr. Dracos and Mr. White, have hired other contractors and paid them $300 and $350 to repair the garages. Later on, um, and this is several days it took to put these garages up, there's 21 of them. There was, besides my questions about the garage and whether it worked or not, um, I wanted to see the manual, as some of you may be aware that when a garage door is installed, the installer is required to give this book, which comes with the garage door, either to the owner of the garage or place it inside the garage where it's readily available so you know how to maintain the garage, clean it, oil it, et cetera. What, what is this damn thing supposed to do and what are you supposed to do to to, to maintain it. Tells you what to do, what not to do. None of these were in the garages or given to any of the owners or to Perdido Sand, our management company. I dug this one out of the trash. So I did a little bit more research. I went online and I found out whether or not you can use the old tracks, which this group of installers did with more than, at least more than 50% of the garages. It specifically says never do it. 
it's dangerous. So that's when I started to contact this department here. And I came down and filed a, a verbal complaint. And that was fine. I wanted to be anonymous because I didn't want to be a pariah at the condominium. You know, he's just a goddamn troublemaker. Excuse me. He's a troublemaker. But at the same time, every time my garage door went up, it vibrated like hell. And I thought, this is crazy. So I talked to a couple other owners. The two guys whose garage door collapsed. Mr. Dr. Lambert over here, he's had a lot of problems with his. He has four garages there. He owns four. So I came back and I talked with um, Tanya. Trenasa? Yes, Trenasa. Mm -hmm. And she said, the only way to move forward with this is to fill out a formal complaint. You're going to have to sign the thing and, and appear if you have to. And I agreed to do that. And uh, I, then I started to talk uh, with Ms. Reber. And uh, here we are. So the, the problems that we have is nobody got the manuals. Nobody has ever seen the contract. The contract, I talked with Perdido Sand yesterday, the contract apparently appeared, not appeared, but it is, is based on an invoice and a payment of a check. So I really don't know what the scope of work is. If there's something written out there, I've never seen it. I paid for this darn thing, 1200 and some odd dollars. So when I started to look at some of the other garages, it's apparent Obviously, the two had collapsed. I sent Miss Reber some photographs just, I think it was day before yesterday, of Mr. Lambert's garage where the, the hardware has literally come out of the wall. That garage has been used three times. So the attachment where the chain goes into the drywall, I'm sorry, not the drywall, but the center block is supposed to have like an inch or thicker piece of wood attached to the cinder block, and then that chain drive is supposed to be attached to the wood. The wood was never put in. The attachment where the chain drive goes to the motor was hanging there. It's, it's ridiculous. On the other side of the garage door, if you can imagine like a football field, this is where the bar goes across and there's a, there's a spring on it. That is supposed to have a piece of wood as well, backed to the cinder block wall. It's not there. So the fixture holding that spring up has bent down. The garage door is uneven. It's dangerous. It could kill somebody. If you look through these manuals, this is serious stuff. So did you get those pictures, Ms. Reaver? Yes, I did. I mean, it's. It's like, what the hell? So this is not uncommon. It's every garage has been installed incorrectly. Every single one. From the, the tracks, which came with the garage door. Every garage door manufactured in the United States comes with tracks. That's what I paid for. I didn't pay for something that was 16 years old, it damaged in a flood, covered with salt water and rusting, I paid for the new tracks that came in that darn box. I mean, it's, it's like crazy. So I asked to have an inspection. Well, you can't get inspected after, until you get a permit. Well, you didn't get a permit. Then after you get the permit, I'm told, well, you can't get the inspection unless the contractor asks for the inspection. Well, that's kind of a catch-22. So let me get this straight. <laughs> if you don't want to have your stuff inspected, that there's a complaint filed against, you're done. So I'd like to get some door manuals. The trim that's put around the doors, it has to be a certain width to keep the air out. It seals the door from the side of the garage to keep out the wind and the rain and mold and all that. They're all the wrong size. Every single door has the wrong trim. I'd like to get the doors adjusted properly when Mr. Webb finishes his repairs. It, it's, in, it's insane to me to understand that 
that the American garage door, which apparently has been in business for years and years and years, didn't understand that he had to get a permit. It's inconceivable. Every garage door in Escambia County, every single one, needs a permit. Is that correct? Every single one. So how can you install 21 without knowing, I better get a damn permit? Makes no sense to me. Dr. Lambert called American Garage Door eight times. He's got the evidence with him today if you decide to question him. They never came. Eight times. I have a question for Sir. you. Sure. Uh, who contracted with uh, American Garage Door? I believe it was Perdido San Realty. As I said, I've never seen the contract. One of our board members apparently picked this company because their daughter, who lives in Escambia County, had had their garage door done and was very satisfied with the service. Okay. Mr. Combe, you said earlier that you paid for the door. That's so, right. So did you give the money to the HOA? Yes. We were assessed. All 21 of us paid 1200 and I think it was 1220 1250 something like that. <clears throat> I we never a got a receipt, but we did. I have a question. 21 doors. Yes, sir. 21 permits. Mr. Charles. No, I think it, that's the common area for those for that area down now. I think it's belonged to the to the condominium, so it's the homeowners, the condominium, and I think they lease those doors. And it's one permit. I request one permit for the whole 21 doors because it's a common area. So it's just like- It'll be question. one permit. One permit. Okay. And originally a permit was obtained after the installation. It was still done after the installation. And he only referenced one door. And then subsequently he came in and- All 21. Amended the permit to reflect that it was all 21. Okay. All right, Chair, can yes. I say something real Go quick? Ahead. I've been trying to get into this one here for about 10, 15 minutes. Uh, council, I got to recuse myself. I've used uh, American garage doors in the past, so uh, just to avoid any conflict. Uh, I have no issues with that. Uh, Ms. Hampton will get you the proper paperwork uh, after the fact. Thank you. Thank you. If I don't do that quick, I might say something. <laughs> oh, and by the way, this is Charles Wiley. He's our senior plans examiner for Forest Gambia County, and knows everything about code. <laughs> All right, very good. May I continue, sir? So the complaint was filed by a garage door owner, a garage owner? Yes, sir. Okay, and not the condominium association? Yes, sir. And the contract is between American Garage Door and the association. homeowner association, is that correct? Yes, sir. But our ordinance doesn't preclude the homeowner from filing the complaint. Okay, I understand that. Yeah. I just want to get the the sequence down a bit. Have you filed a complaint with the state? This is a local license. His avenue would be with us. Uh, it says on here, state registered. So all local licenses have to be registered with the state of Florida, but he is a DWS license. That is a locally issued license. Okay. So he has a, an Escambia license. Yes, sir. I, yes. Okay. Very good. Can we pull up some of the pictures? Is there a way to do that on our screens? Yes, sir. Um, They are black and white. Are, is this the most recent set? The most recent set. Um, it and says June 1st. Correct. So um, at this time, I'm going to hand you also the pictures, um, just in case. These are, you can pass them around. But I will also have them up on your screen. Let me know if you want me to stop. Good Lord. 
This is Mr. Lambert's hold, hold, garage door. Hold, hold it. And that one right there, it looks like one of the screws is not even in the right spot. On the bottom? Yeah, And that's, the top is bent. This is where the locking device goes through the door. It's the wrong fixture. It was cut in half, and as you can see, it was uh, installed improperly. Good Lord. Did the openings have the wood liners in there prior to the install previously? Yes, usually before don't they wash were torn off. off by the hurricane. Yes. So it ripped, it ripped the structure, had blowout set the fasteners? Yes. So it, does anybody have any more questions of the homeowner? You said Mr. Dr. Lambert called eight times. Yes, How many sir. times did he call the realty place? Because it sounds like they kind of brokered the deal because they kind of knew somebody. Right and well, I mean, you spoke for him, so I just thought maybe you knew that one too. I, I do not. Okay. All right. If you'd like to hear from Mr. Lambert, he's probably Yeah, we, we can bring Mr. Lambert up, Dr. Lambert, if you want to. Do you need, if you would like to come up, please, sir. All right, sir. Give us your name and address, please. I'm uh, Claire Lambert. I also reside at uh, Harbor Point Condominiums at uh, 154 Ethel Wingate Drive, Unit 1006. Um, I, I think in general what we're dealing here with uh, shoddy workmanship <clears throat> and this was my door that has since been replaced it seems that Mr. Webb is getting more concerned about the problem that we've had and he's supposed to come out today I've already uh, had a conversation with him uh, yesterday and they are coming back out trying to remedy the problems uh, just yesterday, we discovered some additional problems like the, uh, the cable that goes from the motor to the door <clears throat> that has pulled away from the wall. And uh, actually, that's um, one of my garages that my daughter is using, and it makes a terrible noise. Actually, that could fall down on a car any time. And uh, we should have, I guess, observed several of these things previously, but we're still finding uh, defects, um, <clears throat> some of the safety devices, and to get back with what was supposed to be included, and I, and I suppose some of this is a fault with the contract. Maybe there were some verbal things that came into play that weren't actually in the contract, but basically what was included was that we would get new doors except for the motors. And anything, the motors, they, if they were still in place, the company was supposed to hook those up so that we had doors that would actually work. And uh, some of those uh, doors, out of those 21, there were several where the connections were not made. And uh, we, we never asked for new motors. Nobody asked for new motors. And, and our motors basically were okay. They were up high. The salt water came up five to six feet in those garages. A lot of mud, a lot of salt water. And uh, just recently, uh, I've been out of town for five days, but recently one of our garage doors, uh, garage number three, the rails that hold the rollers that uh, provide the door to be able to, to go up and down, uh, those rollers, not only mine, but those particular ones in that garage three were rusted and that was the reason we were told we needed new, new doors, that we had a lot of rust where this five, six foot water. And, uh, but those have been replaced. And uh, I do have garage 19. On one side, there's a new rail, roller rail. On the other side, the old one is still there. It has rust all over. And uh, then uh, that's my, my garage 16 is the one that the daughter is using that has the uh, main mechanism that's pulling loose from the wall. And that garage, uh, the pipe that holds the spring, it's probably two or three inches lower on one side. It's not horizontal. The door sitting sideways. The last adjuster that came out and worked for this company, uh, he, he did some things. Uh, 
He, he didn't do some of the major things. He would just say, well, somebody else would be coming by to do that. But I, I asked him to level the door, and he got mad, said he was out of here, and he got in his truck. Uh, I probably <clears throat> shouldn't mention that guy's name because this is a real scary individual. I had to pay him over $150 extra. He was double dipping. We had already paid for these doors, something like $1,250. And their workers that would come out would try to hit us up with more money. And I didn't bring the receipt. Uh, I stay in Georgia half the time. I got that receipt up there. But I paid this guy over $150. And uh, another friend of mine, Don Dawkins, paid him $50. So they were sending people out here to correct the problems. And those guys were charging us extra on the side. And you might say, well, why did you pay these guys? We just wanted to get the darn things where the doors would work. And, you know, this has been such a big aggravation, but I'm getting a little emotional. So, but I Dr. do have right here on my phone. Dr. Lambert, what, why did, uh, what was the utility of having a hodgepodge installation in the first place? What like, was the reason for the right, installation? Right. <clears throat> Probably to net down the cost to each unit, each, each unit owner? Uh, yes, <clears throat> we were assessed. Uh, like $1,250 a piece. And uh, some of these doors uh, were, were damaged severely during the storm. I mean, just blown out just about completely. Some of them were sitting sideways. Uh, Did y'all have an engineer evaluate those fenestrations and the openings and everything that was blown out with the fasteners and the, the we, mounting system into the substrate itself? We, we have insurance on the building. Uh, both personally and also the association has insurance and we are still dealing uh, some of our sliding doors and windows in the building are badly damaged. Uh, we still have a complaint in the insurance company hadn't decided to you know, put in doors. So there's a lot of remedies, a lot of construction still going on, uh, landscaping, uh, windows, uh, doors. But, but who, who made the decision proceed in this way using a hodgepodge application because when we were like anytime I'm familiar with the garage door replacement whether it's a single unit or a you know a multi-family like that it's all new new clickers like the clicker may still work on the old one it could be reprogrammed I, I give them a new one with a new battery and all that stuff that that is expected so somebody made a decision usually it's driven by cost to unbreak that and Larry let it Whiteside and let it be just sir Larry Whiteside is a member of the board who made the decision Where's he to at? replace them all rather than just a few no I mean the components of the it, it, a garage door is a system you have oh, a rail I you have understand. a you have a motor or a drive mechanism that would be Mr. Whiteside the board of directors and so he made a decision to not use a complete brand new out of the box system it was kind of no, that's not Dis true. No, no. Discretionary. The whole garage door was going to be replaced with the exception of uh, there's the motor. No there's no exception. I mean, a, a new garage door that would be warranted in that situation would be all of its components, not that's just. Not true. I think I think the decision was to replace the entire garage door. The only thing not replaced was the motor. Right, and Correct. the motor is associated with the rails in many cases. So is the drive mechanism. I understand that. I understand, but the the, the decision was made not to do the motors. And everything that, and else that, was supposed to be everything else was supposed to be new. But that's that's where a problem lies. But the issue is nobody ma nobody from the condominium made the decision to use spare uh, use other parts. Right. So who did? That's who's responsible. Uh, I would think the contractor. That was left to his discretion. If he wasn't hired and, and, and in his scope with an agreement to replace that, that door as a whole, it's like putting in a new, a new door and reusing the old hardware. That can be problematic, and it's usually driven by cost. Now, when we're talking about the motor, well, are we talking about the motor to open the door or yeah. close the door? Open the door, close the door. Okay, so the motor is not part of the garage door itself. Right. It is, it is separate from the garage door. The motor just is when you come out of, when you replace a, a garage door, you're replacing the door. The motor don't have to have a motor to open the door. Yeah. It's manual. 
So right, the but but with the tracks also, the, the, like the, you the, had the, the tracks, door. The, the tracks have to be replaced. Right, but it, but I'm hearing maybe that wasn't that wasn't established. That was that is true, but that I would say that we don't know what the contract says. They don't even know what the contract is, says. Is the con that's, my point. that's my point. That's not the contract. That's not the contract. Yeah. We have a copy of the contract. A lot of conditions precedent if, to performance. If, if one goes to Home Depot or Lowe's, you can buy a motor separate. Yeah, we're sell. not talking about motor. You can. We, right. The, well, that issue is solved. The, the motor is not part of the door. The gentleman over here had it correct. Yes. What he said. Right, but the tracks the are track. another component. Yeah. The, track, the tracks are part of the door mechanism. Right, but I understand that. But if he was told that he didn't have to replace them all, well, the, the tracks, the, the tracks have to be. Wait, wait, they have, the tracks have to. Well, everything on that door have to be replaced according to the Florida product approval on how right. the door to be installed. That's right. So if that's that, if that track is not part of that product approval on that door, then it's not a a whole assembly. So that door has to be. Everything on that door has to be replaced. Order to meet the standard, the, the, the wind load, and everything. And hey, if you let, take a look at this thing in front of you, gentlemen, it, call, it includes product specifications. The product is everything new, everything new, except then the motor's not in. <laughs> it includes tracks, racks, doors. That's right. Everything. That's right. So, what, but what were they instructed to do? Well, it, that's the contract. Mm -hmm. That's what they were give, told to do. Yeah. Install a new door that includes everything that it comes with. At one time, sure, I'm sure. And that, that was, and they I'm didn't sure do that. that. And the only mit making that let's, decision was the contractor. Now let's hear from the contractor because I I feel like you're going to hear that he was directed to do other things. Okay, well let, we ain't and, there and yet. And while people are getting paid cash and stuff like that, say, hey, can you go ahead and replace well, the? Well, we got to get there. Yeah. Well, let's get them through first, please. Okay. Thank you very much, gentlemen. We'll call you back if we need you. Can I just say one more thing, please? I I've asked. Um, Ms. Reber, to determine whether or not this door meets the code. It is the least expensive, thinnest door made by Wayne Dalton, which is apparently one of the largest garage doors. Mr. Crumbie, Ms. Reber doesn't have the ability to do that for you. But you do. A licensed inspector would, would have to do that, okay? I don't even know if this damn thing's the code. Thank you, sir. All right. Um, we have a... Yeah. Um, let me just say one more thing, if I may. Mr. Webb is making attempts to correct all the deficiencies, and I'm very grateful for that. Very grateful. I'm not associated with the board. I'm not on the board at all. I don't represent Perdido Sand. I represent the garage door owners who want to get this thing, like Mr. Lambert, resolved. It's a mess. Thank you for your time. Um, John, uh, Matt, um, I, I don't know if I associated with American Garage or not. We had our door replaced with Rebuild America, uh, Rebuild uh, Northwest Florida six years ago, and they sent the company to, to replace our garage door, so I don't know. There's it. Just going forward, do you, moving forward, do you, your family, or your business stand to gain or uh, any benefit or any loss by you participating in this decision? No, our garage door has been there for six okay. years. Then I don't think there would be uh, a possible conflict. Okay, thank you. Okay, is, uh, is the representative uh, Brian Webb here? Would you come up forward, please, sir? Give us your name and address, please. Uh, Brian Webb, 8217 Lyric Drive, Pensacola, Florida, 32514. Very good, yeah, any comments to make? Yes, sir, if this job, uh, I would have done it a different way. Um, Perdido San Realty, we're working out of town at Tyndall, Panama City. He asked me to put a bid in, in for the doors. I told him I was real busy. I really didn't have the time, but I went out and did it anyway for him. And I put my, guy, uh, my different crew on it, and these people don't work for me anymore. And um, just some screwballs that I had that, that I thought 
that we were going to do the job right. I had one guy in there that knew what he was doing. He was supposed to oversee it, and I dropped the ball. I didn't go back at all until I started hearing the complaints. Do you, uh, do you agree that these garage doors should have been completely replaced, including tracks, everything new? Brand new, tracks too, okay. but not opener. Opener has that I center. I didn't say that. Okay. I said tracks, hardware, Absolutely, everything. sir. And when I found out they weren't, um, they, they just did it like all this shoddy work I just saw up here. And I, I, I met with the gentleman here and saw all this myself. I couldn't believe it. We don't do shoddy work like that. But all these people that work there are no, no longer with us. Okay. So. Are you, uh, where do you stand right now? with this project? Oh, I'm, I'm ready to proceed and get two or three doors done a day and have these done hopefully by the end of the month. As I can get with the owners of each garage door, they're hard to get a hold of unless I get a, a list from one of these gentlemen. Got it, wait, my okay. And we talked about that last week. So you are, you are willing to completely replace repair, do whatever you necessary to bring them up to code. Yes, sir. To have all new stuff, whatever. Yes, yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, he obtained his permit on April 28th of this year. So he has 180 days. From he that has time. 180 days to get it done. Okay. I would entertain a motion to continue with this until and have him report back in 30 days on your status. Yes, sir. Before we move forward. Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion. Motion made. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion to continue to the next board meeting with you coming back to the board. Yes, sir. With a status. Yes, sir, I will. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign, being none. Motion's approved. See you back here. Thank you, sir. We are at the end. Yes, sir. We are adjourned. I make it easy. <laughs> Thank you, sir. That's the illegal. This is a public space. This is a public space. Hey. 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 Hey.